And the first program we're going to show you is the cog swap loader, which is used to be able to play burn CDs. All right, we're just going to hop back on the computer here, and we'll just show you what you need to do to make backups of your games and how to burn them. We're just going to use alcohol 120. To make an image of the PS2 game, just go to Image Making Wizard, select the CD drive that your game's in, and then select the data type PS2. And then all you have to do is click Next and just follow the instructions. To burn an image, go to Image Burning Wizard, locate your image on your hard drive. Just push next. And then select the data type PS2. Um, and you also want to put a slow write speed so it doesn't get any errors. And that's basically how you burn CDs. Alright, we're going to switch back to our PS2 here and we're going to show you how to use Cog Swap. Um, the hotkey we have set for right now is circle, so just push circle and it'll boot up. Now you want to take out your PS1 game and put in a legitimate PS2 game. And you want to put in a PS2 game that has a, a large table of contents. Um, so like a, a newer game that has a lot of files on it. This way it won't have any problems loading other games. Alright. And then CogSwap will recognize it's a PS2 game. All you have to do is push X. Now we need to use some sort of tool to open up the CD tray. Uh, we made a video earlier and I'm just going to switch over to it right now and explain the reason for this. Alright, I have my PS2 taken apart here and I'm going to show you the purpose of the card slide. Normally if you try to open the CD tray, it'll just get stuck and if you force it, it's going to break. So you need some type of tool, like the card slide, to unlock that locking mechanism. Um, however, it is the card slide is uh, completely unnecessary. You can use um, a whole bunch of tools. You can even make your own. And I'll show you what it does. I'm just going to take off the top and see the tray here. And you can see here's the tray here and the laser. Um, I'm going to take out the tray and you'll be able to see the locking mechanism. They're just two screws holding it in. Um, just unscrew them. And you lift up the left side of the tray and then the other side has to slide out. Alright. And the locking mechanism is right here. And I'm going to zoom in here. Alright. And you can see, I lift it up, it's a little notch that comes out. And what you need to do is use some type of tool to hook onto that. I have my short hook lock pick right here. You can use this, or you can use the card slide, or um, maybe an old library card that you cut out and uh, give it a hook or whatever. And you just need to catch it, the little notch that's hanging out there, and push it over to the right. And as you can see, the laser and the the motor that spins the CD drops down. This will allow the CD tray to slide out and to put in a different CD and then you can slide it back in. Um, but once you slide the tray back in, you have to lift back up um, the laser and you know all the stuff down there. So you have to reinsert your uh, tool and catch the notch again and slide it all the way back. And that's how you uh, switch out a CD. And I'll show you that in action here. Just put this back on.
Alright, put the screws back in. I'm going to replace the top. Um, this, this is necessary because it holds the CD in. Alright, that's all on. Um, it's going to turn it on. And pop open the CD drive. Good, I didn't break it. Good sign. Put in the trigger CD. And I'm going to just boot up into the... I'm just going to load the exploit like usual. And I'm going to launch the cog slot. And I'm going to... Eject the trigger CD and insert the legitimate CD. Alright, and now this is where I need to switch out the legitimate CD for the burn CD. And obviously, you can't just do that with the eject button, you have to do it manually. Um, so, all you have to do is insert your tool, whatever it may be. First, you have to go to the right side. Push it over to the right. And as you can see, it dropped down and it slid out a little bit. And I can pull it out the rest of the way. Put in the burn CD. Push it back in. And then to, this is the tricky part, kind of finding it. Uh, it may help if you lift up the CD tray a little bit to get all the way over to the right. And You'll feel it when you get it. And just push it over again, and as you can see, it popped back up. Alright, now all I have to do is tell CogSwap that I have switched the CDs, and everything should boot up properly. Switch over the TV. And there you go. I've switched the CDs. It is now Shadows of the Colossus. Alright, I'm just going to show you that once again with the PS2 all put back together. If you're using like a lock pit or some other type of tool besides the card slide, you're probably going to want to pop off this little piece of plastic that goes in front of the CD tray. Pretty easy, just kind of tug on it. Just gonna use the same method as before. Swap in our burn CD. Alright. And then just press X. Alright, there you go, that's how you use Cogswap.